you know, back in those horrible days, back in the 70s, and there were like, you know, zombie hordes walking in the streets, and New York was, you know, dirty. It was just like Escape from New York. <laughs> because really, everybody now is, you know, all about, uh, you know, every shit is back in the 70s. But everybody I knew, I didn't know one person who at some point didn't say it was really fucked up and horrible here. And I can't wait to get out. <laughs> and there's this great Lou Reed monologue you can get on YouTube where he says how much he hates it in New York, but how much more uncomfortable he is everywhere, everywhere else. <laughs> so we were, I don't know when we got word that Iggy wanted us to go on the tour with him. But it was a pretty fast series of events. So we were doing a show at Max's Kansas City. And now, you know, I just went by there the other day, and the sign says Max, M A X X, Fresh Freeze, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> and it's, it's ironic, I don't know if they know in that building. Anyway. So we were playing a show at Max's, and we had really shitty, horrible RV. We had these really nice tour buses now, but we had this really scummy RV, and, you know, like one mattress in it. And we heard Iggy and Bowie wanted us to open up for them on this tour, the, the idiot tour. So we did this show, and must have, you know, left the Max and said, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, one in the morning or something like that. We get into our RV, we drive up to, I think, Toronto, one of, Toronto, one of those cities out there, and got maybe a little sleep all the way, and staggered out of the RV, which you know, really groggy, and walked into this hall where we're going to play with them. And there's fucking David Bowie and Iggy Pop are standing there, just the two of them, and saying, you know, welcome to the thing. And it was, <laughs> It was kind of mind blowing. <laughs> um, you know, it was, it was a real big deal that Bowie was acting as a backup musician for Biggie. Even then, you know, he was, he was, he was showing his respect for Biggie, which was a nice thing. So, somewhere along the line, later on, I did this little session with Iggy and Debbie, and David was kind of reluctant about me taking his picture. I you know, I guess he didn't know if I could take pictures or what. I always thought he was kind of careful about his image. So I think like one or two shots of him and Debbie. But Iggy was, you know, go for it, that type of guy. And I did this, you know, series of them backstage. And the flash, I mean, I really hate direct flash, so at that point, I had a long cord and I just wrote a little crappy flash in and off to the side and it made a nice shadow in the thing. And the other interesting thing is Debbie's sunglasses were stuff for a pair of sunglasses we bought on the Bowery for about, you know, it was like three bucks. And they had a big, it was a junk store on the Bowery, and they had a big cardboard box full of these sunglasses. And everybody had seen the GVs had these sunglasses. And they look like, you know, designer shades, but they're not even close. <laughs> you know, that's what it was. And it's weird because, you know, cause when I was taking all these pictures, there's people around me, and at the time, you know, we were coming up, we had a little notoriety, but it wasn't like, you know, who saw it coming? Nobody knew. I didn't know, you know, 30, 40 years down the line, everybody was going, oh, 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 it's iconic and stuff, you know? So you guys, Take pictures of your friends, you never know what's going to happen then. 